Welcome back students. I decided to add this lecture about dealing with null values in QGIS. After being alerted about an issue in the processing modeling section, and of course it also applies to the vector analysis section because processing model was just automating that whole process. And I wasn't unaware of this issue, but I was really focused on just showing you how some of these processing tools work and, and how the graphical modeler works. And I didn't want to add confusion by getting caught up in a lot of technical details. But it is a real issue, and I want to talk about it a little bit more now. So what exactly is null? Well, first of all, it doesn't mean zero. What it means is that there's no data whatsoever. And that concept can be a little bit difficult to get your head around, especially if you're used to working with shapefiles, because shapefiles don't really have a concept of a null value, and that can create some issues. Oftentimes, people will try and get around this by assigning a value that's very unlikely to be used, like negative 999 or something to represent a null value and then excluding those when you're trying to do averages and things like that. It's just a messy way of dealing with it. That's the reason why most database systems include the concept of a null value to mean no data. And so to help motivate a way of thinking about this, let's consider the field fledglings in the raptor nest data. Now zero means that somebody actually went out and looked at the nest and found zero fledglings. That's a real value. Null means that nobody even looked, and we have no idea what the value should be. It could be zero fledglings, it could have been a thousand fledglings. We don't know because we didn't see. And so if you're doing averaging or things like that, you want to include value zero, but you don't want to include null values. Now let's take this a step further, and suppose you know that only 40% of the fledglings survive. And you want to create another column in your attribute table called survival, or maybe expected survival, and you want to populate that by multiplying the number of fledglings by 40%. That will give you the expected number of survivors. And zero fledglings times 40% equals zero survivors. Again, that's real. That's a real value. Zero was the real number of fledglings, and zero is the real number of selected survivors. But if you try and multiply a null value times 0.4, you end up with, again, null, because null means no data. You can't multiply that by 0.4 because you don't know what it means. And so the result, again, is going to be no data. And so the take-home message is that any expression that includes a null value returns null. You can't add null values. You can't multiply them. You can't really do anything with them other than ignore them. And that's the whole point of a null, is it's something that's supposed to be ignored. But that can create some problems when you're populating fields with expressions, because there are times when you might want to handle that null value to mean something specific. And in QGIS, in the expression editor, we have something called the coalesce function. And the way that works is you pass the coalesce function a set of values. And it can be any number from 1 on up. I've never actually used this with more than two values, but it is possible to have more than two. And what the coalesce function does is it returns the first value that is not null. So in this case, if value 1 is null, it returns value 2. But if value 2 is also null, then it returns value 3. And it just keeps going down the line until it finds something that's not null. So how would we use this? Well, consider the possibility that we know that in our fledglings columns, after we've gone out and collected all the data, and we know that we've looked in every single nest, but somehow the people that were entering the data got a little bit lazy and they didn't enter zero if there were no fledglings found. And so we end up in our data with some null values. But we actually want them to be zero. In this case, in our field calculator, we can update the value of the fledglings attribute with this expression, coalesce fledglings comma zero. And what that'll do is it'll recalculate all the values for the fledglings column if it's not null, it's just going to return the existing value. But if it is null, it'll actually populate that with zero. So with this one statement, we can replace all the null values with zero. And this is a really handy thing. Now to provide an example of when you might use this, let's take a look at the results from our graphical modeler that we did. Remember we had this impact percent. And if we open the attribute table, we'll see that we have some issues here. We have some null values, both in the impact hectares column and then in the impact percent column. And there's quite a few of them. There's four right here. You'll see a bunch more if you scroll down. And what's happening here 
is that in cases such as this, for instance, the entire linear buffer is impacted by environmental constraints. So we use a difference tool to subtract the environmental constraints from the linear buffer. In this case, there's nothing left. In that case, the geometry field is null. And so if you try and calculate the area of the geometry field, again, any operation on a null value returns a null. So we end up with a null for area. And in this case, that's not actually right. We want the impact area in this case to equal the total size of the buffer and the impact percent to be 100%. Because if the buffer is 0.372 hectares, 0.372 hectares of that was, are impacted by environmental constraints. 100% of it is impacted by environmental constraints. And so in this case, these null values for the impact hectares and impact percent are artifacts, and they're not really right. We actually do know what the impacts are, and we do know what the percentage is in these cases. So we need to fix this calculation in our model. So let's take a look at the model. Now it turns out that in QGIS 3.0, these models show up in your browser panel. And if I right click on it in my browser panel, I can click Edit Model. And that's going to open the model in the graphical modeler. And what we need to do is this field calculator algorithm that we need to modify. So I'll double click on that. And right here in the formula, I'm going to use my coalesce function to handle the case where the area of what's left over is null, when the geometry is null, because everything's been subtracted. So I'm going to use my coalesce function. The first value is going to be the area divided by 10,000, so that's the area in hectares. But if that returns a null, we don't want to subtract null from area hectares. We want to subtract zero from area hectares. So the impact area will be the same as the area of the original buffer. So I'm going to click OK. I'm going to run this model again. And see, those are all right. They all have the same coordinate reference system. And so I'm going to click Run. And so now, if we open up the attribute table for the new output from this model, now we see that instead of null values, it returned the total area, the original linear buffer, and shows the impact percentage to be 100%. And that's exactly what we want. So this coalesce function is really useful for dealing with null values. And QGIS in general, I think, handles null values very well, because it was originally designed to deal with data that was stored in some kind of spatial database. And even with shapefiles, it will allow you to delete a numerical value, and it will show up as a null. And that can come in really handy. So thanks a lot for listening, and we'll see you in the next lecture.